Hello. So we're moving on to black. We're going through the entire MTG Brothers War card list. We're reviewing all of the cards introduced to this set. Uh, there's a lot of them. We've already done white. We've already done blue. Now we're moving on to black. Um, we're doing them in set number order. So it's all alphabetical. There's no rhyme or reason as to any of the order of any of this. So we just downloaded them all from Scryfall. Um, and we're just going to go through them one at a time. And there's some spicy stuff in white and blue. There's a lot of those colors mechanics. Um, they're leaning heavily into what those colors like to do. And let's see if it's the same thing for black. I'm sure it's going to be. First up for black is the infamous Ashnod. Ashnod Flesh Mechanist. Mechanist. Me Mechanist? Yeah. One black mana for a 1-1 one, one legendary creature human artificer with death touch. I like the sounds of that. Whenever Ashnod, Flesh Mechanist, Mechanist attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do create a pa tapped Power Stone token, you may pay five, exile a creature card from your graveyard, create a tapped 3-3 three, three colorless zombie artifact creature token. Colorless zombies are coming to this set. That is cool. That is cool. One mana for a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch, eh? That's pretty awesome. Ashnod has a lot of history in Magic the Gathering with Ashnod's altar. Um, you know, lots of aristocrat and sacrifice decks have been using Ashnod's altar for a long time. So finally getting a card with Ashnod on it. Um, Mishra's right hand, if you will, uh, is really, really cool. Next up, we've got Ashnod's Intervention. Again, this is going to be alphabetical, so we're not just favoring Ashnod really heavily here. This is just the order of the cards as it pertains to the set number. Uh, one black for an instant. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus O, oh, and gains when this creature dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, return it to its owner's hand. So it's um, kind of like... Um, okay, my brain has not been able to recall card names this whole time, and it's really bothering me. There's a ton of cards in black that um, give you the ability to bring something back after it dies or bring it to your hand after it dies. So basically, you're saving something by um, offering it up in attack, and then you play this to give it plus two plus O, oh, and then return it to your hand if it were to die. Next up, we have Battlefield Butcher. Two and a black for a 1-4 human soldier creature with an activated ability of five colorless. Tap. Each opponent loses two life. This ability costs one less to activate for each creature card in your graveyard. So this could be free. And you just keep tapping this guy to have your opponent lose two life. If you've got five creatures in your graveyard... This is just a free tap to drain, not drain, to ping your opponent for two life. Next up, we've got Carrion Locust. Two and a black for a 2-1 insect horror creature with flying. Yes, horrors are back. More cards for my Umbris deck. Uh, when Carrion Locust enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it was a creature card, that player loses a life. So not only is this a great blink target, um, but in my Umbris deck, and I'm just going to play favorites here because it's my deck, so I'm going to talk about my deck. In my Umbris deck, you want cards to be exiled. So this thing is a horror, so it triggers Umbris. And then you get to exile something from its graveyard, which makes Umbris bigger. That's pretty great. Uh, the flavor text says, no honor, no glory, no leftovers. Oh, we're eating leftovers, boys and girls and everyone in between. Next up is Corrupt. Five and a black for a sorcery spell. Corrupt deals damage to any target equal to the number of swamps you control. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. So there is a full cycle of um, land colors matter. 
cards. Um, the blue one was draw cards equal to the number of islands you control. The white one was create a number of soldiers equal to the number of planes you control. Corrupt is deal damage to any target equal to the number of swamps you control plus gain life. That's pretty great. It's kind of March of Wretched Sorrow, but uh, gets bigger with however many swamps you have. It is six mana and it's sorcery speed, so it is expensive. Um, but when you're at the mid to end game um, levels of a match, this is going to deal quite a bit of damage you know, 10 plus, and you gain that much life. So that is pretty good. Next up, we have Diabolic Intent. So this is Gix. We've, uh, we've heard of Gix in the past, but now we get to meet Gix. And there are some cards. There is a Gix card, which we will get to in a bit. But this version of Gix, this art, makes him look like a Power Rangers bad guy. And it makes me laugh every single time. It looks so goofy. There's supposed to be this like horrendous figure that's super evil, has been tortured for eons, um, and is like just really a dark character. And it looks like something that bites five colorful rangers on the Saturday morning uh, in your favorite kids show. This is hilarious. So Diabolic Intent is one in a black for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So this is a tutor, sacrifice a creature, tutor for anything, put it into your hand. The flavor text says Gix pierced his disciples' minds and savored their experiences as he took in their knowledge. Next up, we have Disciples of Gix, who look far more badass than Gix did in that last card. These guys look like... Um, I keep pointing over here because this is where my screen is, but... Uh, what's over here, the card? These guys look like Knights of Ren or something. So Disciples of Gix is four black black for a four four Phyrexian human creature. When Disciples of Gix enters the battlefield, search your library for up to three artifact cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle. So black doing graveyard things, big surprise. Pretty cool. It's a little expensive, but um, assuming you have the other pieces to the puzzle in your hand, graveyard recursion, um, you know, playing Disciples of Gix on six or seven or turn eight, and then being able to immediately pull stuff out of the graveyard is uh, pretty powerful. Next up, we have Disfigure. For one black, this is a great reprint. One black, it's an instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. This is just removal. Um, or a nice combat trick. If your opponent's going to trade you something or thinks they're getting the better end of the deal, then you Disfigure. Give something minus two, minus two, and you either win the trade or trade off in general, or you can just kill a two toughness creature. It's uh, pretty good. Next up, we've got Dreams of Steel and Oil. Looks like uh, Mishra is having some Phyrexian nightmares or something here. One black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hands. You choose an artifact or creature card from it, then choose an artifact or creature card from their graveyard. Exile the chosen cards. So this is dress, but for artifacts and creatures. And you can target um, a different card in their graveyard, which is pretty cool. That's that's pretty awesome. Considering that this set is going to be very artifact heavy, I would say that this is going to be a major player in that um, kind of Demir control -y. Anything that plays black... Um, in limited is going to want a dreams of steel and oil for sure. Do you want to be able to see what's coming? Get rid of one of their things. I think that's pretty cool. Next up, we've got emergency. Well, the one and a blue oh, one and a blue one and a black for a sorcery. 
Return target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. So this pairs well with the Disciples of Gix. Um, Disciples of Gix puts three artifact cards from your library into your graveyard, whichever ones you want. And then Emergency Weld, you bring something out of your graveyard into your hand and you get a soldier out of the deal. So that's pretty good. And all you need is uh, six, seven, eight mana total. Not too bad. Next up, we've got Fateful Handoff. Three and a blue for a sorcery, a rare sorcery. Uh, draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature you control. An opponent gains control of that permanent. Oh. That is very interesting. So this is kind of like in the same vein, the same flavor view as like bad deal or um cut a deal it's like it's something that's going to benefit you for sure and might benefit your opponent um that's interesting so you want to pick something big so that you draw as many cards as you can but you also don't want to pick something that's crazy because then your opponent's going to get whatever artifact that is interesting oh this is because ashnod gave urza the silex i did not know this part of the story i have not read the fiction yet get the silex to urza at any cost tell him to fill it with the memories of the land ashnod so ashnod's giving their enemy the silex in order to draw cards Next up, we've got Gix, the man, the myth, the legend himself, who looks far more menacing in this art. I'm, I'm going to keep harping back to this um, than he does in this Power Rangers bad guy art. He looks like uh, in those old Japanese Godzilla movies, someone, some poor person is in this costume walking really awkwardly. Um, but he looks crazy badass in all of the other art. So Gix Yogmoth Praetor is one black black for a 3-3 Phyrexian Praetor legendary creature. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may pay one life. If they do, they draw a card. So your opponent can give up life for cards. Um... It also says one of your opponents, so this is also playable in uh, Commander. You can attack multiple opponents and everyone gets the trigger. Uh, for four black, 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 discard X cards. Exile the top X cards of target opponent's library. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards this way without paying their mana cost. So you pay seven mana, discard say five cards if we're lucky seven mana throw away five cards if you've got graveyard recur graveyard recursion you're not too worried about throwing away five cards um then you take the top five cards of your opponent's library and you can play all of them for free you get all the lands that you drew you get all the spells that they you drew and you get them all for free you just Swap your hand, not swap, but you trade your hand away in order to get that many cards from the top of your opponent's library. Really, really neat design. Um, excited to see if anyone ever gets that off. Next, we've got Gix's Caress. Yeah, he's looking a little weird in this one, too. Won't lie. Won't lie. Maybe it's just the like smoothness of this mask that makes him look weird. So Gix's Caress says, it's two and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards it. Create a tapped power stone. So this is um, Thoughtseize, or in the last set, it was... Um, again, I'm just struggling like crazy with card names today. 
Um, um, I, I don't have any in this card in this deck list. Pilfer. Pilfer was one in a black. Um, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an online card from it. They discard it. So this is one more mana. It is a common, so you're going to see it more often. You pay one more mana, and you get to create a tapped Power Stone token, which makes up for the mana. So it's kind of an even wash. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't love it. I feel like in a deck where you want to have as many artifacts on the battlefield as you can, this is probably better than Pilfer. But uh, I still think Pilfer is a better card than this one. Um, next up is Geeks's Command. So again, going with the Command um, cycle, we've seen the white one and we've seen the blue one so far. Geeks's Command is three black black for a sorcery. Choose two. Um, you get to put two one one counters on up to one creature. It gains lifelink till end of turn. Or you can destroy each creature with power two or less. Or return up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Or each opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest power amongst creatures they control. So if you can't do destroy creatures with power two or less, you can do um, opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest um, power that they control, which is nice because a lot of the opponent destroys target creature just winds up being like a token or something small. But this one has to be the one with the highest um, power that they control. You can return two things from your uh, graveyard to your hand. It's a pretty decent card. I think Geeks' Command is pretty good. I think I like Urza's the most so far. But Geeks' is really good. Geeksian Infiltrator. Geeksian. We're using that as a term now. Geeksian Infiltrator is one in a black for a 2-1 Phyrexian human creature. Can you be a Phyrexian and a human? I don't think so. They kind of look like they're in the forest or something. Maybe they were an elf. Now they're a Phyrexian. Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Gixian Infiltrator. Perfect. Something that grows when you sack stuff. Gixian Puppeteer. Three and a black for a 4-3 Phyrexian Warlock creature. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Whenever Gixian Puppeteer dies, return another target creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So originally, I like playing the um, the Fairy Vandal decks, the draw cards and put 1-1 one, one counters on it. And again, like we talked about in the blue portion of this, there's a lot of Fairy Vandal-like cards in blue. Playing Gixian Puppeteer with Fairy Vandals and having a Demir Fairy Vandal kind of build is really good. You drain a two life every time you draw that second card. Your Fairy Vandal gets a little bit bigger. Um, and then whenever this dies, you can return your Fairy Vandal or a previous Fairy Vandal um, from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is going to be a dope card. And it's definitely going into the four mana slot of my... Fairy Vandal deck. Next we have Gixian Skull Flayer. This person looks super badass. Two at a black for a 2-3 Phyrexian Human Assassin. Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are three or more great cards in your graveyard, put a 1-1 counter on Gixian Skull Flayer. With every culling, we bring this world closer to completion. That is cool. Just grows. It's not it's not like um the connoisseurs and stuff that grow every time something dies. This grows um as long as there are three or more cards in your graveyard at your upkeep. That's pretty cool. Next is gnawing vermin. Yes, more rats. Gnawing vermin is one black for a one one rat creature. When Gnawing Vermin enters the battlefield, target player mills two cards. When Gnawing Vermin dies, target creature you don't control gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That was pretty cool. I like it. 
Go for the Throat. Another great reprint, especially in this set. Go for the Throat is one black for an instant destroy target non-artifact creature. So there's going to be a lot of artifacts, but there's going to be a select few really powerful or non-powerful um, non-artifact creatures. And this is a instant kill spell for something that's a non-artifact. Gruesome Realization. One blue blue for a sorcery. Choose one. Draw two cards and lose two life. Or creatures your opponent controls gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. So either card advantage or token sweeper maybe. It's pretty good. Sorcery speed, which isn't my favorite, but uh, it'll have its place for sure. This is Mishra all mecked out uh, versus Urza. Who's just got his nice little leather shoulder pads and his staff. Next up, we've got um, nominee for best card name of all time. Gurgling Anointer. Two and a black for a 1-3 Phyrexian Horror. Yes, more horrors, please. With flying. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a 1-1 counter on Gurgling Anointer. This is, again, Fairy Vandal. The deck is going to be super powerful in this set uh, when gurgling anointer dies return another target creature card with mana value less than or equal to gurgling anointers power from your graveyard to the battlefield wait so this is like just better better puppeteer oh no it doesn't drain puppeteer drains right still this fairy vandal puppeteer We've got the making of a good deck right now. Next up, we've got Hostile Negotiations. Three and a black for an instant. Exile the top three cards of your library in a face-down pile. Then exile the top three cards of your library in another face-down pile. Look at the cards in each pile, then turn a pile of your choice face up. An opponent chooses one of the piles. Put that pile into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Lose three life. <laughs> So that's a really fun, um, this kind of mechanic has come up a few times in the past where you, you know, reveal the top four card or your opponent looks at the top four cards of your library, puts them into different piles and you have to pick one of the piles sight unseen. Um, this is a fun little way where you put two piles of three down, you get to turn one of them up and then your opponent has to decide whether or not they want to give you the pile they can see or the pile they can't see. Pretty cool. That's fun. Fun. I like fun. Next up, we've got Kill Zone Acrobat. Welcome to the Kill Zone. It is time. Enter the Kill Zone. Two and a black for a 3 2 human soldier creature. Whenever Kill Zone Acrobat attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or artifact. If you do, Killzone Acrobat gains flying until end of turn. He's, they're that acrobatic. That's not bad. That's fun. Misery Shadow. Heck yes. One in a black, two, two, shade. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. Oh, is that going in my Umbris deck? Is that going Umbris? I can't remember if Shade is listed on the card. Yeah, I know it's Nightmare and Horror. I know that for a fact. Another Nightmare or Horror enters the battlefield. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily go in the Umbris deck, but it does keep things from going to the graveyard and it exiles them, which makes Umbris bigger. And it's kind of spooky. So it's definitely nightmare-ish. So uh, I'd play it. I'm putting it in there. Next up, we've got Moment of Defiance. Look at this guy. He's like trying to die. And then it's like, no, I'm going to be alive. Two and a black for an instant target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains lifelink until end of turn. Plus you get to draw a card. That's a pretty good combat trick. Combat trick that replaces itself. Sold. Every time. This poor, poor person. Poor, 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 poor person. No one left behind. No dwarf left behind. 
Four and a black for a sorcery. This spell costs three less to cast if targets a creature with mana value three or less. So this is a two mana spell if you're targeting something small. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, you can return something of yours for cheaper if it's small. That's pretty good, actually. Five mana, return anything. Two mana, return something mana value three or less. Dying for the cause is overrated, it says. Okay, flavor text. Next up, we've got Overwhelming Remorse. Four and a black for an instant. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Exile, target, creature, or planeswalker. So this is the removal spell that gets cheaper uh, with the amount of creatures in your graveyard. That's pretty good. I like it. Next up, we've got Painful Quandary. There's Gix looking Gixian in again. Uh, three black black for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless they discard a card. Oh man. This really stops everyone from wanting to do anything. That is powerful. Any spell, not just like instant or sorcery. That's anything. I was going to say this really stops blue and red decks but you can't even be a green deck and be casting creatures or a white deck and be making soldiers like anything you cast you lose five life or discard a card you just have to get rid of this right away there's no way this survives on the battlefield for more than a turn if it does you're losing i mean it's not this is worse than Shieldred. Like, far worse than Shieldred. If, if they played this on turn 5, which it costs 3 black black, if they play, if your opponent plays this on turn 5, you have a 4 turn, you have 4 spell clock. Not even turn clock. You can only cast 4 spells before you're dead. Or you discard your hand cards like I'd rather play against Shieldred than this this is instant instant target instant removal get rid of this no bad no go away on the other hand if it was in my deck I would love to cast this on <laughs> uh, next up we have power stone fracture one in a black for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice an artifact or creature Destroy target creature or planeswalker. So kind of a bone splinters. Um, but you can sacrifice an artifact as well. So if you've accumulated some power stones, um, you can bone splinters your artifact power stone and destroy something or a planeswalker, which is really good. Uh, next up, we've got Ravenous Gigamole. It's the Gigamole. Three and a black for a 2-3 mole horror creature. More horrors, yes. When Ravenous Gigamole enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a creature card from among them cards milled this way into your hand if you don't put a 1-1 one -one counter on Ravenous Gigamole. Okay, so this is the mill, the self-mill card for black. There's an entire cycle of self-mill cards in Brothers War, and this is the black one. That's pretty good. I like that it's a horror. I like that. Next up, we have Thran Vigil. One in a black for an enchantment. When, whenever one or more artifacts and or creature cards leave your graveyard during your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. That's pretty good. That's pretty decent. Just add this on turn two and start recalling creatures from your graveyard and buffing up your weaker stuff. Or you can buff up this guy. Thraxo Demon. That is horrifying. One and a black for a 2-2 two, two demon creature. Oh, here we go. Okay. So it has an activated ability. Pay three, tap it to sacrifice another creature or artifact, draw a card. So there was a bunch of black cards we were looking at earlier that wanted you to sacrifice things. This is a good sacrifice outlet. Drawing cards, triggering those other sacrifice triggers. Pretty cool. Ooh, look at this art. 
Trench Stalker. Four and a black for a four five beast horror. Lots of horrors in black. Um, as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, Trench Stalker has Death Touch and Life Link. Whoa. Okay. So it kind of plays into our Fairy Vandal deck. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Next up, we've got Ashnod's Harvester. Two colorless for a 3-1 artifact creature construct. Whenever Ashnod's Harvester attacks, exile target card from a graveyard. This is also good in the Umbris deck. Um, it has unearth one and a black. Pretty good. Next up, we have Clay Revenant. One black for a 1-2 artifact creature golem. Clay Revenant enters the battlefield tapped. You can pay two and a black, return Clay Revenant from your graveyard to your hand. This is the Skittering Skeletons, the um, Cult Conscript from the last set. There's a lot of cool black cards that, you know, are cheap to cast, are a little bit annoying once they're on the battlefield, but then you can return them from your graveyard to your hand over and over again. Lots of that in black. It's also a really great sacrifice outlet because you can just return it after you've sacrificed it. Next up, we've got Dredging Claw. Two colorless for an artifact equipment. We've got new equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus O, oh, and has Menace. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard, you may attach Dredging Claw to it. Dang. Otherwise, it costs one and a black to attach. Uh, not bad. Plus one, plus O, oh, and Menace. That's, that's pretty good. Next up, we've got Goring Warplow. Six mana for a 5-4 artifact creature construct with death touch. Six mana, 5-4 death touch. That's a pretty good card. But it also has a prototype version where you can pay one and a black for a 1-1 one, one with death touch. So you can play this on turn two. It beefs up your artifact count. Uh, it can help you early game get rid of something and then you can replay it from your graveyard uh, or bring it back to your hand from your graveyard and play it that way. Next up, we've got the artifact Mythic for Black, and it's a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. 7 mana, 7-5, seven, Menace, Lifelink, and it has a ward, pay life equal to Phyrexian Flesh Gorger's power. So if you pay the full price for F Flesh Gorger, its ward is pay 7 life. That is intense. The blue and the white mythic artifact creatures were also very, very intense. Uh, but this one is incredibly intense with Menace and Lifelink. There's also a prototype version where you can pay one black black for a 3-3 Phyrexian Worm with Menace and Lifelink and Ward to pay three life. That is, that is crazy. I'm glad this is mythic because I don't want to see that all over the place. Next up, we have Razor Lash Transmogrant. Two colorless for a 3-1 artifact creature. Ooh, artifact zombie? Cool. Razor Lash can't block. Sure. Four black black. Return Razor Lash from your graveyard to the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it. This ability costs four less to activate if an opponent controls four or more non-basic lands. Weird. I've never seen a an a, opponent controls non-basic lands signifier like that before, but that's really cool. So if they control four or more, you can return Razor Lash Transmogrant from your graveyard to the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it, so it becomes a 4-2 uh, for just two black mana. That's pretty good. And it's a zombie. If you're playing... Um, what is that zombie... Champion of the Dead? Champion of the Perished. You can, you can just keep every turn, like you can return this. Every time it dies, you can return it. And just keep buffing up your other zombie lords. Crazy. Next up, we have Scrapwork Rager. Four black, four black, four colorless for a 2-2 two -two artifact creature Phyrexian Horror. Another horror. 
When Scrapwork Rager enters the battlefield, draw a card and lose one life. So it's like um, all the other Ragers. And it has Unearth for three and a black. That's not bad. Next up, we have Transmogrant Altar. So this is like Ashnod's Altar, for lack of a better word. Uh, three colorless for an artifact. Pay a black, tap it to sacrifice a creature, add three colorless mana. Or you can pay two, tap it, sacrifice a creature, create a 3-3 colorless zombie artifact creature token, activate only as a sorcery. So you can sacrifice for mana um, at instant speed, but you can only sacrifice for zombie tokens um, as a sorcery. This is basically Ashnod's altar. I, I guess they weren't keen on reprinting Ashnod's altar uh, just outright. So Ashnod's Altar is, oh, this is almost better than Ashnod's Altar. Ashnod's Altar is three colorless for an artifact, sacrifice a creature, add two colorless to your mana pool. This is the same mana cost, but you have to pay a black to sacrifice a creature, but you also get one more colorless mana. You just need those sacrifice outlets just straight up. Having those is important. Seems like it's going to be important in black in this set, too. Um, yeah. Last but not least, we have Transmogrant's Crown. A two colorless for an artifact equipment. Uh, equipped creature gets plus two, plus oh. Whenever equipped creature dies, draw a card. Equip is two colorless or one black. This is Skull Clamp. So they've basically re reprinted, rewritten, and reprinted Ashnod's altar, and they've done the same for Skull Clamp, which is really cool. I think that's awesome. Aristocrat players are going to love the bro set. Um, and that's it for black. We've been powering through these colors. Uh, next up is red. We're going to take a short um, 60 second break to drink some water and catch our breath. We've been talking a lot. Um, and yeah, and then we'll jump right into, uh, red. 